sir how do they come up with the page difference ji there was a question uh, how do they come up with the page difference uh, raji aapki uh, wo awaaz piche bahut piche se aa rahi hai microphone mein bhi aapka read ho ke bole thoda sa how do you come up with the page difference is that the question yes sir yes sir okay so uh, let me do this in a bit more detail so so bk is some magnitude of it times e raised to power j theta b theek hai na ji and yes sir theek hai ak is some magnitude of it with times e raised to power j theta a right and what we're saying is that bk equals e raised to power minus j k omega not t not times a k right so this thing here is b k absolute e raised to power j theta b and this thing here is e raised to power minus j k omega not t not times magnitude of a k and e raised to power j theta a. could you please scroll down the window bit ji could you please scroll down the window bit okay okay aap theek hai thank you yes thank you right now now you can you just compare this thing here with this thing here i know both of them are equal right i also know that the absolute value of ak is equal to the absolute value of bk right so this cancels right so this implies that theta b equals theta a minus a omega not t not theek hai na ji yes sir thank you thank you okay good Okay, so Jamshed has asked, does this mean that shifting a signal uh, in the time domain only scales its Fourier coefficients by a certain factor? Yes, that's true. It scales by a certain uh, factor, and that certain factor is not just any factor. That factor is is this factor here, right? And this factor has a magnitude of one, right? So that's that's the key. Okay. Should I move on? All right. So this was all about uh, linearity and time shifting. Um, so then, okay. Um, ये example. This is this example is from the textbook. Okay. Uh, I think this is example three point five of the textbook. um and and the reason why I, i put this example right after these two properties instead of discussing these pro uh, the other properties earlier is because this example uses both linearity as well as time shifting okay uh, so what you require to do is what you you're required to find the fourier series coefficients of uh, this signal g of t here and one of the ways you could do it is to just use directly use the um the analysis equation i'm not going to do that rather through the properties and i'm going to try to relate g of t with x of t here okay so it turns out that g of t is equal to x of t minus 1 minus half does everybody see that okay so this is something i uploaded yesterday all right so g of t equals x of t minus 1 minus half and so let me let me begin by yahan is example ke bare mein does anybody have questions so how many of you have seen this uh, video how many of you have seen this video
Okay, Asna, I can up. Is your Asna, is your mic working? No, it's not working. Okay, Junaid says I wasn't able to. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so let me pick somebody. Uh, Minahil. Minahil Tokir. Yes, sir. Di Minahil. Uh, any questions? I mean, was was everything clear with this example? Yes, sir. It was perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. For some anybody who is not perfectly fine with this example, who see who has seen it and is not perfectly fine. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly uh, quickly go through this. So this is g of t is x of t minus one minus half, and you can verify that you can get this signal by indeed uh, through this relationship, um, where x of t is a square wave uh, that we've covered already that was there in the review uh, review material as well. Um, so if x of t has four DCs coefficients given by this. Um, and for the, for particular t1 equals 1 and t equals 4, the, the, this turns out to be the expression um, x of t minus 1 just by using the shifting property that we've seen earlier. x of t minus 1 k ye 4 dc's coefficients hai. And then g of t equals x of t minus 1 minus half. Okay. Um, so why is, are the Fourier series, what are the Fourier series coefficients of half? So in other words, if I just tell you that x of t equals two. What are the Fourier series coefficients for this? Good. Uh, so I am getting some private answers as well, which are, which are correct answers. Um, so I'm going to pick on somebody like in Hamza. Hamza Rashid. So oh, yes, sir. So X of T equals two. Is there 40 series coefficients? Kya Sir, it's coefficient. Good. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, Muniba Tahir, can you hear me? Okay, Jamshayd. Achha, Muniba. So Muniba, why? Ye kyun hoga? A not equals two kyun hoga? Okay, I'm getting questions here. So can you explain how A not equals two? So what if it was X of T equals sine omega naught t. How do I go about evaluating the Fourier uh, series coefficients for this? One of the ways you could do it is good is Euler's uh, identity. So this is just one upon two j e raised to power j omega naught t minus one upon two j e raised to power minus j Mega naught t, right? And then I just simply compare this with the analysis equation, which is a k e raised to power j k omega naught t, and I clearly can see k this must be a one because this k equals one here, and this k equals minus one here, so this must be this thing must be a minus one. So the answer is a one equals one upon two j and a minus one equals minus one upon two j. Okay. Now, uh, what if, I mean, using the same ideas, right, Junaid, uh, Jamshed, sorry. Uh, 
So x of t, what if x of t was two? Right, so two is actually equal to e raised to power j times zero t. This is actually equal to two. Right, so this must imply that a naught equals one and a k equals zero for k is not equal to zero. Chika Jamshed? G sorry? Oh sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. I I would want to say that I have done some mistake. You can pick on me. Right. All right. Now, what if uh, Razi? Yehi. If you do this analysis equation, se karte, could you have found the answer? So when I say analysis equation, se karte, so what I say is that a k. Is actually equal to one upon t integral over t x of t e raised to power minus j k omega naught t dt. Right? But x of t is just two. Right. So, is integral ka result kya hai? Okay, good. So, Jamshed says we don't know what t is. We don't know what t is. Do you know what t is, or do you not know what t is? So uh, is a DC signal periodic? Of course it's periodic. What is the period for that? Any number that you pick. Any number that you pick is going to be period for that. Right? So any T will be a valid period. Right, because it's a DC signal, DC signal is always periodic um, with any capital T, right? We don't know that the fundamental period is undefined, but the period would be any number capital T, okay? So, so what do you get here? So this is one upon T integral over T. So this is two here, and this is E raised to power minus J K omega naught is two pi by capital T times T dt. Good, right? So Hassan gives me the correct answer. Uh, so Hassan says uh, that this integral for any value of K, which is non-zero would be zero. Okay, so this is equal to zero when K is not equal to zero. Right? And this goes back to the review lectures that I uploaded as well. Um, so, and essentially the reason why it's zero for any value of K, which is not zero is because you're integrating um, a sinusoid over an integral number of periods. And we know that the sinusoids, uh, the area under the curve of sinusoid, if you integrate them over integer number of periods is always zero. Okay? The exception of course is when K equals zero. When K equals zero, you're integrating, so this is two by t integral t times d t, which is equal to two when k equals zero. So you can use the analysis equation to come up with the same conclusion as well. Okay, and I would urge you to uh, to do everything a couple of ways. I mean, do it this way, do it that way. You should get the same result for each and every one of the, the methods that you try. Okay. All right. Yeah, have any questions? Then, so let me know. Otherwise, I'll I'll move forward. Uh, you can uh, pose your questions in the chat window, or you can unmute your mic and just ask me. 
Okay. Otherwise, I'll go move forward. All right. So um, then I had uh, exercise. I'll, I'll uh, postpone these exercises till, till the end. Um, let me do this time reversal. So time reversal. If x of t has a Fourier series coefficient a k, what are the Fourier series coefficient of x of minus t? Uh, you do all of this, you go through the proof, and you'll find out that the Fourier series coefficients of x, which is just time reversed, are just simply the Fourier series coefficients are also time reversed. So B sub k's are just simply uh, a of minus k. Um, so what you're flipping the periodic signal in time results in flipping of its Fourier series coefficients as well. Okay. Um, and then there's time scaling, right? So time scaling, if x of t has a Fourier series coefficients of a k, x of alpha t has Fourier series coefficients of b k, what are these b k's in terms of a k's? Um, you go through this exercise and you'll see the Fourier series coefficients do not actually change. All that changes is the frequency, okay? Um, and mind you, this is a little different than, than this or the previous examples here. So if x of t has a period t, X of minus T ka period kya hoga? Same. Same. Good, Razi. Uh, so if X of T has a period capital T, X of minus T has exactly the same period. Anybody has problems with this? Okay, ab jay, um, I can't even see your faces. Right, if you have problems with that, just feel free to let me know. Okay, even if you do, just feel free to let me know afterwards and I'll be happy to, more than happy to clarify the concept for you. So the bottom line is, if X of T has period capital T, X of minus T has exactly the same period, okay? Um, on the other hand, if X of T has a period capital T, Okay, uh, Jamshed, uh, let me move on. I can explain this uh, to you a little later. Okay. Um, so, X of T has uh, Fourier series coefficients A's, right? Or as a period T, X of alpha T ka period kya hoga? So, X of alpha T ka period is going to be T by alpha. Okay. And why is it T by alpha? Okay, so uh, why is it T by alpha? Let me try to address this first before moving on to, uh, to time reversal. So X of alpha T period T by alpha Q hai? I mean, can somebody explain that intuitively? Iman? So because the signal is either compressed or an expanded version of the original signal. Good. Right. It's either compressed or expanded version of the original signal. Okay. If it's compressed, that corresponds to the case when, when alpha is greater than greater than greater than one, one. greater than one, and uski wajah se the period is reduced ho and it makes perfect sense that this should be t by alpha. Okay. And the frequency scales up. The, the time period scales down. The frequency scales up. Right. And vice versa if alpha is uh, between zero and one, right? Um, and you can see that from the proof here as well. So X of alpha T is just, I just simply replaced with alpha and, and all that changes is the frequency changes to alpha times omega naught. Okay. So the frequency changes to alpha times omega naught, the Fourier series coefficients do not change. They remain the same. All right. Okay. Uh, so by the way, if X of T, equals x of x of alpha t then x of you can clearly see that x of alpha t plus t by alpha is also equal to x of alpha t 
plus t which is equal to x of alpha t uh, alpha t right so therefore i mean there's another way to see this another way to see this that this must be the period of x of alpha t right this goes so back could to you please explain this so so this is from uh, from from our earlier discussions on periodicity okay um so uh really let me uh, uh postpone this to the office hours if that's fine with you okay i'll i'll note okay. this one okay uh, okay. i'll note this on the questions kya rahe the uh, time reversal ke bare mein tha aur uh scaling period so let i'll postpone these uh, questions to a bit later let me just uh, quickly go through the other other material acha and then um finally yeah finally the this was the last module um uh, on uh conjugation and conjugate symmetry okay so if x of t has uh, has fourier series coefficient a sub k x conjugate of t what are the fourier series coefficients for those we go through this exercise of the proof okay and we observe that bk equals a of minus k conjugate right and therefore so this is the conclusion here this is the conclusion that b of k is equal to a of minus k conjugate right so what does that the implications it has uh is on the conjugate symmetry for the case when x of t is real so if x of t is real i know for a fact that x of t equals x conjugate of t right if x of t is equal to x conjugate of t in the time domain that means the fourier series coefficients for those in the frequency domain must stay the same as well so a sub k is going to be equal to a of minus k conjugate right and therefore this what this means is okay, the the fourier series coefficients of real signals satisfy a conjugate symmetry property right they satisfy a conjugate symmetry property so that means is if i take a fourier series coefficients over here uska jo symmetric fourier series coefficient on on around k equal 0 hoga that's just simply going to be the conjugate of what you had here in the beginning okay uh, so a of 1 for example is going to be the conjugate of a minus 1 a of 2 is going to be the conjugate of a minus 2 a of 3 is going to be the conjugate of a minus 3 and so on and so forth right um on top of that if x of t is real and even not only do the fourier series coefficient satisfy the conjugate symmetry property but they are also symmetric so the ak equals a of minus k okay and i combine them together and i can conclude that ak conjugate is just ak that means the fourier series coefficients are real and you can do the same thing uh, for okay hasan so let me let me just quickly wrap up and then I'll, i'll take your question okay uh, and then if x of t is real and odd you do go through the proof and you'll find that ak conjugate equals a of minus k that means the fourier series coefficients are purely uh, imaginary g hasan amar aapka question hai koi ji sir assalam alaikum sir wa alaikum assalam सर ये ऊपर जो है आपने जो पहली लाइन में ए के माइनस के कॉन्जुगेट किया था तो ये आपने साथ तो एक्स टी और एक्स टी इज इक्वल टू एक्स कॉन्जुगेट टी के एग्जाम्पल दी हुई है तो इस हिसाब से तो ए के इज इक्वल टू ए के कॉन्जुगेट नहीं होना चाहिए था माइनस के की जगह पर पॉइंट हसन जस्ट स्टे विद मी इसके फोर इस ठीक है जी सर इसके क्या है इसके ए माइनस के ए माइनस के कॉन्जुगेट है दैट्स व्हाट माइनस के कॉन्जुगेट ठीक है दैट्स व्हाट वी डिड हियर दैट्स व्हाट वी डिड हियर ओके सर ठीक है सो देयरफॉर देयरफॉर दिस मस्ट बी द सेम एज दिस ठीक सर ठीक है एंड दैट्स व्हाट यू गेट हियर ठीक है डज दैट दैट्स एन आंसर क्वेश्चन Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, any more questions about this? It's <coughs> meeting.
Any more questions about conjugate symmetry? Okay. So in order to see ke kitni samajh aayi hai, kitni aayi hai, uh, let's try to answer these questions that I posed here. Right. So, so let's uh, just look at question number one, which is consider a real periodic signal. We know that this Fourier series coefficients will be conjugate symmetric. Show that the magnitude of the coefficients are even and their phase is odd around k equal zero. So let's try to answer this question number one. So who's going to help me here? So what you're saying is if it's a, signal, it's a signal is real, we need to show that the co the magnitude of the coefficients are even and the fade is odd around k equals zero. The uh what was it? What about the integration a of k? Uh, but you don't need to do it over and over again, right? So we have a result already, right? So we know that for for real signals. For real signals, what condition do the Fourier series coefficient need to satisfy? They need to be? They need to be what? Uh, you can write it in the chat window, type it in the chat window, unmute your mic and speak up. Good. Right, so Tanzil says, uh, so if the signal is real, the Fourier series coefficients need to be conjugate symmetric, right? So what I mean by conjugate symmetry is that a k is going to be equal to a minus k conjugate, right? Now from this expression, can you see that the magnitude is going to be even? Yes. How? Same. Because sir, it's just a conjugate. There's a phase difference or something, and if we just, it still keep our J K W not B, and still A. Therefore, the magnitude will be same. For J K my J K W not will always be one absolute, and A K will be good conjugates. Magnitude of conjugates always same. Good. So any, every, anybody else who has a problem with this? So Zaira uh, pointed out perfectly. Uh, anybody else who has a problem with this, understanding why this, that is true? So for the magnitude, you just uh, magnitude on both sides. Sir, a question is, mm -hmm. sir, it's a little bit. Sir. So, uh, AK is equal to AK conjugate be same only question? No, that's not what I said. So, the question uh, Hassan asks is, okay, does this mean, and I'm going to put a question mark on that, that AK equals AK conjugate? Is that what you're asking? Yes, sir. Uh, magnitude key terms. Man. Magnitude key terms, man. Then you, so magnitude, I mean, is this what you're saying? Um, yes, sir. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is the difference between the values? Yes, sir. 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 No, so, the, so now I'm talking exactly values be same. So I'm not saying anything about the magnitude. I'm just talking about the complex numbers. I'm saying that this complex number is the same as this complex number. That means not only is the magnitude of this equal to the magnitude of this, but also the phase of this is going to be equal to the phase of this. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, over here, I'm saying, just saying the magnitude is okay, but nothing else. Thank you, sir. Okay. Achha. So anybody else who has a, uh, has a problem with So can you explain more? Okay, good. So 
So if I take this magnitude on both sides, so I'm so this implies this thing, this thing implies that the if this number is equal to this number, then the magnitude of this number must be equal to the magnitude of this number as well. Right? So a k magnitude is going to be equal to a minus k conjugate magnitude. Right? TK Jamshed. Jamshed is that fine? All right. If that's true, what is the magnitude? And I, I, I clearly know that the so this is equal to a minus k. Right, because the magnitude of a number is exactly the same as the magnitude of the conjugate of that number. True? Right, so the magnitude of x is the same as magnitude of x conjugate. Take care. So that's why, uh, so this implies that AK is equal to, absolute of AK is equal to absolute of A minus K. So that means magnitude is even. Okay, what about the phase? Uh, for the phase, I know that the phase of AK let the phase of AK be theta K. Right? And the let the phase of A minus K be theta minus K. Right? So a k equals a conjugate of minus k. This implies that the phase of of theta k equals minus of the phase of sorry phase of a k is equal to the minus phase of a minus k. Does everybody see that? Why? Because if this number which is some x, which phase of the x conjugate ka phase kya is the negative of the phase of the original number. Okay. So this implies that theta k equals minus theta minus k. That means it's odd. So the so the key result that I've key fact that I've used is that the the phase of a, the the conjugate of a number is a negative of the phase of the original number. Okay. Muniba asks is that a k equals a conjugate of minus k for real signals only or real and even signals? So the answer is only for real signals, not for real and even signals. Okay. So Rimsha is asking, can you please explain when the magnitudes are equal in the previous example makes them even Rimsha, can you, can you speak up? Use your mic. Sir, um, Assalamu alaikum. Sir, in the previous example, when we found the magnitude a k, when we equated uh, that to a minus k, how do we know that is even? Like, no, I, I'm not saying that's even. I'm saying the magnitude is even. Sir, how do we know the magnitude is even? Like, can you please define when so, we know uh, that the magnitude is even? Yeah, you see, is this clear? Uh, Ignorant. So there seems to be some like so 
एक मिनट निशा ये मेरी स्क्रीन हैंग होगी है। okay, sir. Yeah, so Manahil is giving you the answer here. Uh, can you see my uh, uh, cursor, my? Yes, sir. Okay. So you see, a k equals a of minus k conjugate, right? Is that clear? Yes. Right. If I take the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this must be the same as the magnitude of this, right? Right. So a k magnitude must be the equal to the magnitude of a minus k conjugate, right? Right. And the mm -hmm. magnitude of a minus k conjugate is exactly the same as the magnitude of a minus k, right? Yes. So the the magnitude of a k is equal to a of minus k magnitude. Right. Right. So, so sir, if the, if the value of a k is even, then only is this yeah. applicable? No, no, of course not. Hmm. So because a k is a complex number, remember. Right. A k is a complex number. It has a magnitude. It has a phase as well, mm. right? We're just talking about the magnitude yes. here for now, and we're saying the magnitude of a k is exactly the same as the magnitude of a of minus k, right? So the magnitude is symmetric around k equals zero. In other words, if I had k on the x-axis, yes, right, k on the x-axis uh, with k being integers, mm. what I would have is k. Uh, I, I'd see a symmetric magnitude around k equals zero, and that's why it's even. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got so it. Magnitude of a one is going to be the same as magnitude of a minus one. Magnitude of a two is going to be the same as magnitude of a minus two, and so on and so forth. Sir. Thank you, sir. Ji Razi. So over here in the statement that magnitude is even, does it refer to that that the value of the magnitude is even, or is it it is symmetric about the origin? I, so is that that's symmetric around the origin. Okay, good. Uh, when I say the magnitude, it does not, I say it does not refer to the value of the magnitude, right? No, of course not. Of course not. When I say is even, this is an even signal. Okay, with, got it. Thank you. With k as the independent variable. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you for asking that question. Actually. Um, So, uh, so Huda is asking, can you explain why the phase of AK is equal to the negative of the phase of A of minus K? Um, uh, Huda, can you unmute your mic? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Abhutaiya, please. Sir. How can you say that the phase of a k is equal to the negative of a negative of the phase of a of minus k? How did you use that? What does that actually mean? Can you show it by by an example or something? And so the AC, I mean, so that has to do with complex number. If I take the conjugate of a complex number, what happens? What happens to the phase? That's what I'm asking you to explain. So, uh, so the conjugate just flips the phase. So, if x is absolute of x e raised by j theta, what is x conjugate? Jihuda, x conjugate kya hoga? Sir, can you repeat? So, my question is: If there's a complex number x, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's a bit blurry. The connection is not. Okay. So if x is a complex number which has a magnitude x and a phase theta, x conjugate mm -hmm. it will be equal to the same magnitude and e raised by minus j theta. That's the yeah. definition of conjugation. Okay. So it's phase. Okay. So now I get it. That's actually the definition of conjugation. Conjugation just flips the phase. Now you may be uh, more familiar with conjugation. Kya hoti hai ke uh, imaginary part ko negative kar dete hum, right? Maybe that's. Mm. But if even if you do that, you'll get exactly the same result. Okay, tan inverse. Use karenge na, right? 
Yes, sir. And that's that's uh, the negative sign inside brings the negative sign outside as well. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay, tan of theta minus theta is minus tan theta. Yes, sir. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Acha, so let's uh, uh, answer some of the other questions that I posed. So the second question I posed was that for a real signal, show that the DC coefficient is always real. Acha, mujhe ek baat hai ke, uh, who has already attempted these, these exercises? All of the exercises that I uploaded. Can somebody raise, if, if you have attempted all of them, can you please raise your hand? Going once, going twice. Acha, if you have attempted some of them, can you raise your hand? Good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Some of them. I mean, at least one of them. Good. Right? So there are at least two people who have attempted. I mean, there should be more than two. Tell him, Baral. Um, so, uh, Zehra, can you say something about uh, two? Can you unmute your mic? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, sir, in the second part, if you write the uh, analysis equation for A0 and A0 conjugate, uh, they actually turn out to be same. So that means that A0 is actually equal to A0 conjugate, so they must be real. Okay, good. Uh, my only uh, point here would be you don't necessarily have to go back to the analysis equation. Why? Because using that analysis equation, I already have this result. I mean, why don't we just work with this result? Yeah, okay. So Zera, once again, agar, agar aap sirf, aap us, the only information that you were given is this, right? Using this relationship, can you show that A naught is always going to be real? Um, sir, there is nothing like A of negative zero, so they have to be the same. K and okay. negative K. Ah, okay, good. So there is actually A of negative zero. Nothing new. A zero hi hota hai. Right? So for the second part, good. So A, I know that A K equals A of minus K conjugate, right? So for K equals zero, A naught is equal to A minus zero conjugate, which is just A0. Minus 0 is just 0. Right? So A0 is equal to A0 conjugate. Right? What's that? What's that? When I say A0 equals A0 conjugate, what does that mean? What does that mean for A not? Haris Ahmed. Uh, sir, it means the signal is real. Signal is real. Signal is not real, it's a number is real. I mean, A not a member is oh, not sorry. real. Yep. It's, a, it's a number. Number is real. Okay. Yes. So this implies that uh, A not is real. Achha. So the challenging or the interesting part is part three. So we've seen that if a periodic signal is real and even, its Fourier series coefficients must be real. Okay. Now consider a periodic signal whose Fourier series coefficients are real. Does it mean that the signal must be real and even? Why or why not? Right. So I am getting at least two no's here. Any, uh, so who else thinks that the answer is a no? So once again, if the Fourier series coefficients are real, does it mean that the signal must be real and even?
Who else thinks that the answer is a no? Good. Uh, only four, five. Okay, Huda. Um, why do you think it's a no? Do you that? Sir, we already solved it in class as well. I'm sorry. Game. Yeah. Chahuda, I cannot hear you. So, Chali Rimsha. Rimsha, can you hear me? Sir, for it to be even, it has to be equal to, a k is equal to a minus k. And for it to be real, it's con a k has to be equal to a minus k conjugate, right? Okay, good. So, uh, uh, I wrote it in my notes that they are not supposed to be, like if the coefficient in the real, it doesn't mean that the signal is even and real. Mm -hmm. So we can prove it from uh, substituting the values from those two equations and checking. What uh, two values? Sir, so basically the, we have two equations, right? One is for real and one is for even. Mm -hmm. and then we can place it and check them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not equal, that means it doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be equal for all values. Uh, uh, I think you're almost there. Uh, maybe I'll let somebody else. Hassan, Hassan Chaudhary? Okay, so let me let me do this. Let I'll I'll let you pond all ponder this over this for a while. Okay, and um, I mean if you're still there in the office hours, uh, we can try to. Uh, address this, all right? Okay. Uh, what I can give you a hint of is K. When I say that the signal is, when I say the signal is real and even, right? Because of the signal being real implied one condition. And because the signal being it was even, it applied a second condition. And it's because of the combination of both conditions that we obtain the fact that the Fourier series coefficients are real. Okay? Right? So those two conditions implied that the Fourier series coefficients are real. Right? If the Fourier series coefficients are real, it does not necessarily mean that both of those conditions are going to be satisfied. It may or may not be. Okay, so th those implication is that implication is one way, and that's a sort of a hint. Maybe that you can start thinking about this on your own. Um, and if you come up with an answer, great. Uh, if not, uh, we can uh, try to address this uh, in the office hours. Acha so Zaira gives me some answers. He's, she says, I think can be real, but not necessarily even, since simply real signals. Also have real coefficients. I am not sure. Can we use the synthetic equation in proving this? Yes. Uh, I would rather use the analysis equation. Okay, let's, uh, why don't you try to do that? So in other words, why don't you try to um, answer this question? Okay, if the 40 series coefficients are real, what condition does the time domain signal need to satisfy? Okay, that's a question you, you can try to answer. So office hours are immediately after this class. Okay, okay, Amit, so it's, it's an, 
11 a.m. starting 11 a.m. अच्छा जी, so और कोई क्वेश्चंस हैं, so I think there's one exercise that I missed. Um, yeah. All right, so let's do this uh, before we end. Okay, so you've already watched, hopefully watched the module for this already. Okay. Um, so consider a periodic single SFT that is even, what special property will its 40 series coefficient satisfy? So this should be easy for you to answer, right? So who can answer this? Can you raise your hand? I mean, if you don't raise your hand, I'm going to pick on somebody. So we're trying to address problem number one. Consider the periodic signal XFT that is even. What special property will its Fourier series coefficient satisfy? G Razi. So A of T would be equal to A of minus T. Good. Why do you say that? Because uh, the signal would be symmetric about the y-axis yeah. so the magnitudes of both the values would be the same but uh, they would be just the negative of the value of the positive value and the magnitude ke lava phase they all going to be the same so essentially even signals ke liye x of t is going to be equal to x of minus t right yes sir right and i know that the fourier series coefficients for this if i compute the fourier series coefficients for this, if this is AK, I know from the previous module that was immediately before this exercise was that is going to be A of minus K, right? Minus K. Yes, sir. Right? So if if X of T equals X of minus T, that means they must be the same in the Fourier domain as well, right? So, yes, sir. So therefore, this must be true. And that's the condition they need to satisfy. Okay. Acha. What about the odd signals? Uh, given this, what about the oscillator? Good, Minahil. Uh, a of k is a of a of minus a of minus k. Good. So, Arsalan, Muhammad Arsalan. Can you hear me? A of K is equal to minus A of minus K. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm talking. Muhammad Arsalan, can you hear me? Jamaniba? All right, good, Hassan. So the uh, Hassan Abib also says the same. He says that the, uh, the coefficients would also be odd, and that's true. So X of T equals minus x of minus t. So therefore, ak must be the same as the 40 series coefficient uh, for these and the 40 series coefficient for these we know are minus a of minus k, right? So this is the condition that needs to be satisfied. Okay, now, what about the third problem? Show that the DC Fourier series Fourier coefficient of an odd periodic signal will always be zero. That should be fairly obvious, right? Ah, so Tanzil says something interesting. So Tanzil says that for odd signals, x of z equal x of zero equals zero. That's true. So Tanzil says, okay, Tanzil. But how does this imply that A not equal to zero? I'm not talking about X of zero. I'm talking about the DC coefficient. Deetanjil, can you unmute your mic? Yes, sir. 
हाँ जी आपने कहा कि ऑड सिग्नल्स के लिए एक्स नॉट एक्स ऑफ जीरो इज इक्वल जीरो राइट सो हाउ डज दिस एम्प्लाय दैट दी फोर इज जीरो नहीं सर वो मुझे लगा वो ए के वैल्यू ए के ए जीरो है इसलिए आ गया था ए जीरो इज नॉट द सेम एज एक्स ऑफ जीरो ठीक है सो दैट्स व्हाट आई ओके गलत है गलत है सो राइट गुड राइट सो अब आप ये रहे यू स्टे ऑन द लाइन देन देन व्हाट्स द आंसर देन जी यू सी ए के इक्वल्स माइनस ए ऑफ माइनस के राइट So this is for mm. odd signals, right? So if I just plug in k equals zero, what do I get? A naught equals um, a naught is equal to minus a naught. What is the number that satisfies this condition? Zero. That's zero. Right. All right. Good. What about the fourth? So this is so this is something we done two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. What about the fourth one? Can the DC Fourier series coefficient of an even periodic signal ever be zero? You can't tell me. I mean, is there a guarantee that the DC coefficient? So we know that the DC Fourier series coefficient of an odd signal must be zero, right? So that's a guarantee that we've uh found out in problem number 3 right problem number 4 may can the dc for is equal so if i give you an even signal now is there a guarantee that a not is not equal to zero is there a guarantee so ji uh hasan abib choudhry you want to answer Uh, sir, won't the uh, coefficients be zero for any non-zero values of k? For any non-zero values of k, the coefficients will be zero. Is that what you're saying? Jameson. Yes. but that's just a dc signal i mean if you're saying that the fourier series coefficient of a signal are zero whenever k uh, is not equal to zero that's just a dc signal right yes sir okay so you're you're giving me a counter example is that what you're saying mere nahi khayal mein ab ye keh rahe the aap kuch aur keh rahe the shayad right but no, sir i'm saying ke that... For non-zero uh, values of k, won't the Fourier series coefficient be zero? What is the signal? The DC signal. The only signal that satisfies that property is a DC signal. Okay. So the answer to this is no. So all you need to do is to find a counter example. Okay. And as somebody has pointed out already, um, so a counter example is a cosine. Right. Is this an even signal or an odd signal? Even signal. It's an even signal, right? Right. So it's called yes, sine of omega naught t. It's just one upon two e raised to the j omega naught t plus one upon two e raised to the minus j omega naught t. Right. So what's a zero here? बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस देखी मैंने आप लोगों ने राइट सो ए नॉट इक्वल जीरो राइट सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन इवन सिग्नल फॉर विच द डी सी फोर इज सीज कोफिशन इज जीरो सो दिस इज नॉट ट्रू
Oh, sorry. So uh, what I'm saying is, yes, it can be zero. So what does DC Fourier series coefficient mean? Okay, good. So DC, when I say DC Fourier series coefficient, I'm referring to A naught. Okay. Okay, why, uh, why is it called the DC second? Uh, DC coefficient. Well, I'm not sure about that. I'm not the reason why it's called the DC coefficient is because it tells you what the DC value is. So in other words, A naught is just simply one upon T x of t e raised to power j times zero times t, right? Omega or omega naught p n. Right, that's a naught, which is just simply one upon t integral of x of t dt. So that's a naught. What you have DC here? So it's d. So yeah. dc stands for direct current. Uh -huh, like you know, we use it for for a lot of other things. I mean, even though it stands for direct current, uh, like in in Fourier analysis, we could say DC is the average value, if you will. Right. So this is the this is the average value. And this is called the DC value. Okay, so the coefficient. It's the value of the coefficient at k equals to zero, right? At k equals zero. Yes. True. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so Jamshed says, Katie, can you use the analysis equation as well for, for part three? Uh, finding a number of the integration of your single one could be resolved with zero. Yes, that's true. Uh, Jamshed, yes, you're right. You can use that as well. And that's an interesting point. Uh, so, interesting point, he says, Katie, uh, if I compute a naught, a naught is just one upon t, t x of t dt. And this could be, for example, minus t by two to plus t by two. I know for a fact that odd signals with this must be zero. Okay, I know for a fact that for odd signals, this must be zero. And therefore, uh, this indeed is equal to zero. Good point, Jamshed. Acha, so I'm going to wrap it, this discussion up uh, here. Uh, May I suggest that I, I, I understand that um, I, I was delayed in uploading the, uh, the videos. Uh, I should have uploaded them earlier. Um, so I'm going to try to upload the Thursday's videos um, by tomorrow morning, inshallah. And the next week, we're going to try to upload the videos uh, over the weekend, most of them, and maybe uh, some a little later. Uh, but I would strongly encourage you to please go through the videos before you attend uh, this discussion session. Usse hi aap come, uh, uh, you'll, you'll be able to maximize um, your learning experience. Okay? Um, so, Razi has raised his hand. Razi, Razi. You say you refer to A naught as the average value. It's the yeah. average value of what? Average value of the signal. Okay. Average value of the signal. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So as I was saying, okay, uh, please watch the uh, the content. Uh, you can read the notes that I, that I uploaded as well. Um, and uh, most importantly, try to attend most of the exercises that I upload as well. Okay. Uh, I believe that will help clarify the uh, things. If there are any questions for me, uh, uh, sir, can you share this in the PDF form in the notes? Yeah, these are the notes that are not clear for me. You see, I mean, this is just scribbling here. But uh, uh, sir, this is still after the lecture, it will be helpful to see it in a few days. I'll do that. Or sir, वो काफी सारी PDFs की बजाय एक ही हो तो या वो काफी सारी PDFs आप खुद से कमाइन कर लें I mean the point is कि वो it's uh, it's better for my own organization I mean I make a module uh, and then immediately follow that module up with with the PDF 
so i can break it down into smaller modules everything so you can always combine all of the pdfs together on your own i mean sorry numbered hai one after the other is that okay ji oh, oh sir um, like jaise ab aapne thodi update kar di hai wohi baat hai to ye wali bhi agar share ho jaye to updated jo hai main uh, okay i'll try i'll try to do that maybe i just send you pdf thank you sir okay acha uh, any more questions or, or or rather feedback about how should we go about this i mean i don't know kaisa raha kaisa nahi raha i mean this is a completely new thing for us as well so if there is any feedback uh, just feel free to let me know i mean even uh, either right now or, or you can um, send me an email later as well abhi koi feedback hai to bata dijiye please प्राइमरी जो आपका पॉइंट ऑफ सो द प्राइमरी मटेरियल वो होगा जो हम पहले लेक्चर से पहले अपलोड करेंगे दीज सेशंस आर ओनली मेंट टू क्लैरिफाई द कांसेप्ट्स इन द मॉड्यूल्स दैट वी हैव अपलोडेड अर्लियर ठीक है तो इसलिए मैंडेटरी नहीं है अटेंड करना राइट जी रजी सर कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन दैट हाउ इज द वैल्यू ऑफ पे नॉट फॉर द फंक्शन कॉस्ट so acha mai uh, if if there's other feedback let me know mai uh, before i answer this uh, question acha agar abhi sharam aa rahi hai to beshak baad mein mujhe i mean uh, send that to me in private um acha ahmed uh, you are saying i need permission to save group chat uh, so i think Uh, so so when i record i'm recording the session the entire session here so that's automatically going to record the chat as well i'm going to upload the chat as well if you wish theek hai acha raji ye aap cosine ke bare mein puch rahe the right yes sir right okay so see i mean a not ki term kaun si hoti hai a not ki term wo hoti hai jisme there's a dc offset right so if the, for example so a not wali term kya hoti hai so this is a not times e raised to power j 0 t right that would have been the a not term right yes sir but we there's no term like that over here okay this is not there okay right so this this corresponds this corresponds to k equals 1 This corresponds to k equals minus one. Oh, we got it. Right. Okay. This would, if there was a term like this here, this would have corresponding to k equals zero. In other words, had the question been x of t equals two plus cosine omega naught t, what have been what would have been a naught here? Two. That would have been two. Okay. So, okay. please, could you do the same for the third example? Uh, third example, concerns? Uh, the one above. Yeah. Uh, how 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 is a not equals to zero for odd signals? Uh, so that's because a k equals minus a of minus k, right? Yes, sir. That's that's the condition that odd signals need to satisfy, right? For k equals zero, what yes. happens? A is equal to zero. Nay, a not equals minus a of minus not. So I just k equals zero here. The k equals zero here. K equals zero here. K equals zero here. Right. So you're just saying a not yes, equals minus a not a not. Yes, sir. And the only number that satisfies this condition is a not equals zero. Oh, we got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments or feedback?
Okay. <coughs> so, where sir? did it uh, Sir, for all signals, x sub 0 is equal to 0. Yes. Uh, sir, how? How? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you see, I uh, think this is a benefit that your old concepts are very जो शायद क्लैरिटी नहीं थी वो उसमें क्लैरिटी मिल जाएगी इस तरह राइट सो व्हिच इज अ गुड थिंग सो x ऑफ t इक्वल्स x ऑफ माइनस t फॉर ऑल सिग्नल्स राइट जी दोबा ठीक है यस सर यस सर सो देन x ऑफ 0 मस्ट बी इक्वल टू व्हाट सॉरी यहां पे माइनस है Okay, zero, yes. X of zero, right? Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you, sir. Yes, X of zero. Good. Achha, um, Osama says, can you, uh, will you uh, always upload the exercise solutions? I mean, the ones that I've done here, I'm going to upload. Uh, cheese has anybody tried this one here? Has anybody tried to do this? Do you have a question or uh, No, sir. No, no, sir. Sorry. Achha. So, this is try Zara, Zara, you try it? Or Dusa Iman had Karagata, came and navigate a problems. So, Iman, did you try these problems? Okay, so let's do this now. Um, may I advise you strongly uh, to try to do this problem? as a continuation of the previous one. So this, this, this is just another method of trying to find the Fourier series coefficient uh, of, of the example that we had earlier and just before this module uh, in two ways. One of the ways is this, just by using a direct analysis equation. And the other one is just a slightly different uh, relationship. That's a slightly different function. And for both methods, you would observe that you get exactly the same answer. Okay, I will ask about this. Okay, if somebody has done it or not. And then maybe over the weekend, I can upload the solution, right? Um, somebody also asked me, Get it Thursday, ko repeat hongi? no, Thursday, ko we're going to cover new material. So I'm going to try to upload the new material uh, by tomorrow. And then Thursday, we're going to discuss that material. Okay. We, we have office hours now from 11 to 12.15. I may leave. Uh, I have another class to prepare for the evening. Uh, so, um, uh, Naveed, I think, is, is, is going to be conducting those office hours. Naveed, take care. Is Naveed here? Thank you, Moment. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, I suggest that we take a small break maybe 10 to 15 minutes and then we rejoin the meeting by clicking on the same link. So I will be here uh, to answer any further questions and uh, there are some exercises that we could not go over. Maybe uh, we can try to cover that. Yeah, good. Telling you. So, uh, let's take a break. Thank you, Moment, once again. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. So please uh, rejoin um, after let's say 10 minutes by clicking